national holiday celebrating the birth of the country. And this morning, or this afternoon, I think we need to do some basic draft. I still have some uh, set six heroics to pick up. I'm not going to pick up one here. I will take the Yeti, though. Um, I'm going to try and slow down and explain my picks a bit better. This will be more of a uh, learning draft. There's was somebody on the uh, Reddit earlier that was looking for good new streamers to help out new players. So I'm going to try and slow down and explain what I'm thinking and my thought processes on this one more, rather than just play and occasionally explain the difficult decisions that I make. So here, I've got the six heroics. I'm not a fan. Ooh. Hey, Mongo. I'm perfectly fine with math as a shorthand. Um, here I've got your Yorontu Warlord, which is a very strong card if you can pick up additional Yetis. There are several Yetis in the current draft environment, not the least of which is the rare Forge, or Dark Forge Yeti that I really hope to see. Leyline Demon is a mediocre card in draft. Um, there are plenty of cards that give you free plays, uh, particularly the spells that chain together, like Necrofly, that show up. But there are not enough of them to really make this card shine. You're not going to trigger it. You'll probably only trigger it one out of the four games you play, if you're lucky. Um, its stats aren't anything spectacular. They're standard utility creature stats. And without it being able to trigger its ambush reliably, it's not a great pick. Arrow Mine Squadron um, is more of a card for a Metamine deck rather than draft. There are some Metamines in draft that are useful, um, but the Metamines that you really want to uh, play with Arrow Mine, Gox, and Drix, you aren't going to see in draft because they're legendary. Mindbreaker is not bad, but with this card, Mindbreaker is useless. Uh, it's the new meta mine. I actually had quite a bit of luck with it yesterday uh, in my mono faction tournament. But if you're trying to use this guy in Mindbreaker, you're wasting your time because you'll play this guy, draw the Mindbreaker, then play Mindbreaker, draw more cards, but you have no place left. So it's a self defeating goal there. Hammerfang is a very nice creature. Um, I have seen Hammerfang run away with games because against the right kind of opponent, with a little bit of luck, he can become nigh on unkillable. And you buff him with something like Rat of the Grimgaunt or Dryad's Bloom, Dryad's Boon, and he just runs away with it. However, I will say that I think Yorante Warlord is a better card between the two of them. Warmonger's Mod is a buff spell that only affects attack. It can win you games, but it's very situational. I don't like a situational card as my first pick, if I can help it. Um, it's also soft level gated, so the card creatures where it would really benefit you in the later play levels to double their attack, you can't hit. Um, unless you've leveled it up, and then you've used a card that is going to generally go as a two-for-one trade, and yada, yada, yada. It's situationally powerful, but it's not consistently powerful. Progeny of Zith is a fun little creature, but I don't think it's particularly good. I never really thought it was particularly good. There are certain constructed decks that try to abuse its mechanic with things like Lyria or Varna and get back more Progeny of Zith while killing Progeny of Zith and just have a ridiculous amount of board flood. That can't be killed because it respawns. However, it is the only card in the game that gets worse as it levels. And its level 1 stats are not good enough, and its ability is not good enough for me to justify it over something like a Yorante Warlord. Yorante Warlord, having a creature with direct damage to a target creature that you choose, assuming it's in an open lane, etc., etc., and potentially, and the potential for blowouts with multiple Yetis make this the surefire first pick of this pack. So I get to follow that up with a choice of a Loyan, Utera, or a Dinosaur and hold out and see what comes next. 
I'm not a huge, in fact, I'm not going to take countermeasure. I don't like the card. Um, it's got some flexibility, but again, it's not got enough oomph to make it a great pick here. Uh, minus four attack can be useful, but you're still dedicating a play and not actually removing a creature. Plus four attack, you're dedicating a play and asking for that creature to get two for one. Uh, it's Scaling is very nice. It doubles at every level to a minus 16 or plus 16, but that's not enough to really make it feel like a good play. I also have a very loving kitten with me right now. Um, Werewood Ranger is not bad. If I'm going to take Utera, this is probably the card I'm going to take. Back. Hi, kid. Hi, <laughs> kid. <laughs> Now, if I'm going to take Utera, this is probably the card I want to take. It's not as good as Grove Huntress because the, your opponent will see it coming and can possibly answer it before its ability goes off. It does have slightly better stats than Grove Huntress. But it is not a card that I am particularly excited about. Deep Branch Prowler is an underdrop. Um, underdrops are cards with very high level 1 stats or level 1 effectiveness that I would draft to expect to play in the later player levels when I draw a bad hand. Um, underdrops are good to take. Deep Branch Prowler is not a spectacular underdrop though because his scaling is still very, very bad. Um, he really only has one good level, and that's level one. You could try and play an aggressive deck with him. Uh, it's been my experience that does not work out for you. Uh, and if I'm going to take an underdrop, I would rather take Cragwalker. It has the same attack stat. Uh, and when you're using it as an underdrop, unless the health is something absurd, the health doesn't matter. Because if I'm throwing it to clean up a rank 2 or rank 3 creature, uh, the set difference between 7 health and 2 health is irrelevant. It's going to die either way. And the Cragwalker also has mobility and a much, much better scaling of its attack as it levels up. Uh, so it also can be a viable win condition with its mobility. Featherfang is basically Cragwalker without the mobility and slightly more health for slightly less attack. I would take Cragwalker over Featherfang any day of the week. And in fact I think that's what I'm going to do here. I like Feather or I like Cragwalker better than I have Werewood Ranger. Uh, if I were going to force Utera, Werewood Ranger would be my pick. Alright, here I'm going to take Bright Tusk Sower. We'll talk about a couple of the other creatures first. Gloomspire Worm is terrible. It is basically the definition of a win more card. If you cannot get its trigger, its stats are absolutely garbage at every level. Um, yes, there will be times when the stars line you can get its trigger, but for the most part, it's going to be post combat. That means you can't use it as a blocker of something to remove it. It's a play to put pressure on your opponent, but you can only use it to put pressure on your opponent when their board is empty. In which case, you've got plenty of other cards in the game that put good pressure on your opponent without being nearly so restrictive. I never want to draft this guy. Um, I occasionally get it in a two-card pack, and the other card is worse, and I'll take that, take it then, but outside of that, I really don't like it. Uh, Everflame Aura is a very nice underdrop spell. Uh, seven damage or mobility is two very powerful effects. Seven damage is enough to kill quite a few creatures or play cleanup in rank two. And surprise mobility can win games. Um, if you're looking in rank three, this could be a great closer card. However, it scales horribly, and I don't want to get locked into my second faction by the choices of the random number generator. Deep Branch Prowler we already, already talked about. It's a decent underdrop, not great. Bright Tusk Sower is a multi-lane effect which can act as a little bit of pressure with the tokens. The tokens do scale. They don't stay as a 1-1. Uh, they can be multi-lane blockers if you're trying to stall and get better cards. Uh, you can also do things, they won't matter in this game, like sacrifice the token and Necrium. 
since I'm not playing Necrium, the token sacrifice effect is less important, but this is still what I'm going to choose. The multi-lane effect is, in my opinion, better than the 7700 drop. All right, here we have Bad Spell. Scatter the seeds, you get three random uh, tokens in, three tokens in random lanes. Uh, the tokens aren't big. It's basically Phyto Bomb for yourself only. Uh, it's not terrible, but it is a bad spell. And as a general rule, you want to take a bad creature over a bad spell. Because a bad creature can reliably block and affect the board. A bad spell, you can draw and it's just dead in your hands. Now, Scare of the Seeds is a little bit different because it does affect, it is guaranteed to affect the board because you're dropping seedlings. The seedlings are so small that unless you've got something like a Werewood Patriarch or a Lifeblood Druid, Dryad. Yes, Lifeblood is Dryad. Uh, no? Yeah. Anyways, Lifeblood, we'll just leave it at that. Uh, this card really does not excel, in my opinion. Flame Jet is tempting. It's a decent spell. Um, it's not something you want to play on level. It should only ever be played under level unless you are really desperate to kill something. <clears throat> because it's basically, if you wait until rank 2, its damage is more or less comparable to a rank 2 spell. It's a little bit weak, but rank 3, it's more or less comparable to, a, it's level 2 is more or less comparable to a rank 3, and then it's rank 3, 18 damage is comparable to any other rank 3, like your Auntie Bolt, which does 20. Uh, that being said, I'm still not a fan of it. Uh, it's, rank 1 damage is just too low, even as an underdrop, to make it a great pick. And Fire Main Steed is a creature I quite, quite thoroughly like. 3, 6, 6, 9, 16, 19, with mobility 2 at every level. Uh, you can generally dictate how it trades out with, because it has mobility 2, and with the 16 attack at level 3, it's absurd. Uh, it is a weak level 1 and a weak level 2, so you're taking some risk by playing it. The fact that it has mobility 2 gives you some ability to mitigate that risk, but it's still a riskier play than some other options that you can level. But it pays off very nicely with the 16, 19, and rank 3, and I'm going to take that as my creature here. Okay. For anybody just joining me, I'm doing a more instructional draft instead of quickly drafting my cards like I've been doing as of late, trying to explain all the logic behind the picks I'm making. Here, this is, again, it's wanting me to take, giving me a Deep Branch Prowler. The Borean Stormweaver is one of my top picks in draft. It's got an activate ability that is targeted removal for cleanup. Uh, you'll frequently have creatures with one or two, three health left after combat that this guy can clean up for you. His stats at rank 1, 2, and 3 are all decent. Uh, his rank 3 stats are really good. Uh, it's going to level uh, of the card that beats the rule of 6, but 4, 6, and 8, 10 is not bad. It trades off with quite a few things evenly, particularly when you consider its activate ability. And it's got enough of a body that it doesn't just keel over dead to anything. Uh, I'm definitely taking the Stormweaver here. Okay. Now the question is, do I want Dark Forged, or do I want to go with a steadier or less risky draft strategy? So let's start with the cards I know I'm not going to take out of this pack. Flow Hive Siren. Um, mediocre stats and an ability that is relatively worthless. There will be occasions when you will see somebody manage to pull out a game because of the small life gain that Flow Hive allows them to survive an attack and do lethal. But as a general rule, health gain is an ability that doesn't affect the board. So if you're taking 12, healing 12 just prolongs, your, prolongs the inevitable. It doesn't actually solve the problem. And add to that the fact that it's variable, so you can't predict how much you're going to get. It's not reliable. Uh, it's not a creature that I like. Windborn Hellion sounds good in theory. Whenever a creature moves, it gets plus one, plus one. 
plus 2, plus 2, plus 3, plus 3. It's got a lot of health on it. 8, 12, and 17. It's a decent creature, but it's not really as great as it should be in practice. Um, you need to have quite a bit of mobility to make him work. Better yet, a... Uh, da -da 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 -da. Wind Weaver. Uh, so that you can get of all your creatures' mobility. And then it can start to add up. But with the way my deck is right now, I have two creatures with mobility. And believe it or not, that's really not enough to justify the Windborn Hellion, in my opinion. Particularly not over some of the other cards in this pack. Groot. Uh, I will always call this guy Groot, in case you don't get the reference. If, you've seen, if you haven't seen Guardians of the Galaxy, you won't get the reference. But if you have seen Guardians of the Galaxy, first of all, it's a Guardian. And if you read Torgmai backwards, it is I am Groot. And he's basically a giant plant monster, so it makes sense. Uh, this guy can be very nice. He thins your deck and he grows big. However, he is dependent upon you having plants. And right now in the draft, there aren't a lot of plants that I like to take. Um, there are some plants that I will end up taking, like Grapple Vine. But for the most part, the plant selection is very thin right now. And there are very few plants that are good high picks that you would want to banish. I mean, Grove Matriarch is uh, out of the draft rotation at this point, which was my number one go-to plant in the past. So I'm not a big fan of Groot right now in the draft. Now, when there are more plants or better plants that you will likely want to pick, using him to banish the underlevel ones when you miss leveling them can you play something better in your hand is a much better pick. But with the current environment, I'm not a fan. Now that leaves us with three cards left. The Pterodon Rex, if I'm drafting for silver value, is obviously what I take. Because uh, it's heroic. He is a nice creature, and there are some strong dinos in the rotation right now. There's the... Uh, well, for, I've got Cragwalker. He doesn't benefit Cragwalker a lot because he has so little health. It's basically plus one attack. The, the health is irrelevant. Um, there's the Tempest Dino that is Defender until it moves. That's a 6 6 10 10 16 16. He helps that quite a bit. Uh, there's Feather Fang, another low health Dino, so it's questionable. And I'm trying to think of other Dinos. There's uh, Razor Tooth Stalker. The Tempest Dino with mobility, when it hits a creature, hits, the, hits your opponent, it grows. He helps that guy quite a bit. However, I haven't picked up any dinos that really benefit from him. And I'm early enough that I want to try for the Dark Forge strategy, so I'm going to take Dusk Hunter. Last up is Nagrath Bruiser. It just gives health to a target creature. As far as combat tricks go, this is probably the weakest of the combat tricks. Uh, when I say combat trick, it's a, a card you play from your hand that can have an effect pre-combat that alters the outcome of the combat. So you would play him, buff a creature that you had so that it doesn't die, and then you've taken a, possibly a negative trade to an even trade or an even trade to a positive trade. When I say positive trade, I mean you keep your card, your opponent's card dies. Even trade means both cards die. Negative trade, your card dies, your opponent's card lives. All that having been said, I'm going to take the Dusk Hammer. Um, I haven't played enough with Dark Forge and Draft to have a good feel for how they end up working out, but there's a lot of potential with these guys if you can get a decent quantity of Dark Forge in your deck. If I can't pick up any more Dark Forge, uh, this is a terrible, terrible card. But I'm going to try it. Here, Bramble Axe Warrior is a potential victory condition, where you can use him to give surprise breakthrough to a monster creature and win. Uh, but that doesn't tend to happen very frequently. He makes a decent underdrop with a 6 and 10 attack, but he's not going to survive anything. That's not an exceptional underdrop. Cavern Serpent is another card that sounds good in theory, but does not work out in practice. Uh, poison on your opponent sounds good. It's guaranteed damage. So it can be another reach card where you have your opponent almost dead and you can't get damage through because you're losing board state. That having been said, 
his stats are horrifically bad, and he dies to almost everything and kills nothing, which makes him rather unplayable, in my opinion. Blood Boil uh, is probably going to be my, my pick here. This is very solid removal. It's pretty much guaranteed to be post-combat removal, so you can't use it proactively, but you can hit a creature that has the Soul Forge equivalent of summoning sickness. I forget what it's called, but... Uh, a creature that was just played last turn and kill it before it can either activate or do damage to your face. Uh, it scales decently well. Between 1 and 2, there is almost no scaling. It goes from 10 to 12, but from 2 to 3, it goes from 12 to 20, which is quite a nice a bit of damage. Deep Branch Prowler we've talked about. Deepwood Bear Rider is tempting. It has a very strong level 2, capable of killing a lot of level 3s. But to get to that, you're playing your 5-2 level 1, which is just bad. 86-6 uh, creature kills this and laughs. So I'm going to take the blood oil. Here I'm going to take a little bit of mobility hate, I think, with the grapple vine. Um, mobility is a pretty strong effect in draft, so having some mobility hate to lock it down isn't a bad idea. I don't really like his stats. His attack is just abysmal at every level. But this also opens the door where I might be able to take a group later on because now I have a plant to banish. If I pick up some more plants, it'll work out better. Stranglevine Hydra, I'm not a fan of. Um, it doesn't have great stats, and it has to be able to hit your opponent to get its regeneration. I'd rather just have uh, one of the basic Hydras that start with regeneration. Yes, this one can grow with its regeneration and get out of hand, but if your opponent's letting that happen, you're probably going to win the game anyways. Oops. Hey, Fragonaut. Yeah, I got beat pretty badly by your Ator deck yesterday. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, I had my chat in the view the people mode. Missed what was going on. Uh, I'm going to take the graph of mine here. Zephyr Mage is another card that sounds good in theory that doesn't work out. <laughs> doesn't work out in practice. And yes, Indie Incorporated. I don't know why there are Yetis on here. Um... There's really only one Yeti, and it was just introduced this set that has mobility, so it doesn't make a lot of sense. But it's a cool enough artwork. We'll take the grapple mine. Um, we've discussed Flame Jet and Feather Fang. I'm not a fan of Flame Jets, and between Cragwalker and Feather Fang, I'll always take the creature with mobility and more attack, so I'm taking the Cragwalker. Ooh, that's tempting. I have two dinosaurs thus far. It's not a great option, but I'm not a big fan of Flowstone Primordial. It's got a good level 1 and a decent level 3, but its level 2 is so very, very weak. And that's, in my opinion, the worst level to have weak. It doesn't serve as a great underdrop because then it's in your deck and when you draw it. So if you play this in level 1, you then have, or sorry, in rank 2, you then have this guy in rank 3 and that's not really any better than its rank 1 for the situation. If you're playing this aggressively, you're playing a really bad card in rank 2 and trying for the rank 3, which then you're playing the numbers game and run the risk of not even seeing the rank 3. And the rank 3 is not enough to justify it. So I want to take Thunderstop and see if I can uh, get some impressive kills off with my Cragwalkers and Thunderstop. It does mean I value dinosaurs more highly as we go, like this Swamp Moss Ancient, um, or this Stegodon, or this Cragwalker. The question is, do I want to take one of those, or would I rather take the Dust Hammer? Pyre Mystic's not bad, um, but they're... Sorry, that's not even the card I thought it was. Um, stop. Back up. Pyre Mystic is bad in draft. You're not going to need a life gain deck to justify its ability. 
uh, it's it is underwhelming in its stats. It is less than the rule of six at every level. When I say rule of six, I'm talking six attack, ten attack, and sixteen attack for the three levels, which is what you generally want to tr strive for in draft. So the question then becomes, I am not a fan of Stegadon. Its rank up ability is a rank up ability. Uh, it doesn't have stats large enough to justify a great play at any point. If you can buff it, it can be useful, but then you're investing more cards into a mediocre card. I'd rather take something like Swamp Moss Ancient and buff it, and then I'm investing more cards in a card that's harder to kill. That was weird. Uh, Cragwalker we've discussed. I think I'm going to take the Dusk Hammer, see if I can get some more Dark Forge as we go along. Uh, because I have the Thunderstop, Swamp Moss Ancient might be the better pick, though. And voila, no Dark Forged. Okay, we've talked about Zephyr Mage. Um, again, it's, it's a card that sounds better than it turns out to be in practice. <laughs> uh, Flame Lance is a very nice card. It gives you some reach because it does damage to the face and damage to the creature. And if you've played all three levels, it is 21 damage to your opponent, which is a fifth of their life total. Which is not anything to sneeze at. Um, Assurian Mystic, I'm not a big fan of. Its stats are too low. Yes, it does grow when it hits the opponent, but it's also very easy to answer. Uh, 14, 16, rank three is not spectacular. A 4-6 rank 1 is not spectacular, and an 8-10 rank 2 is not spectacular. I am assuming, because it has aggressive, that you get one hit in on your opponent instead of looking at its true base stats. Also, its base stats are such that it would get eaten by Plunder Imp, and if you don't level him, he is absolutely terrible. So I'm going to take the Flame Lance here. Uh, I'm not even going to discuss Vernon Grace. He is, maybe it's an underrated ability, but it's bad. Alright, so whenever you play a spell, this guy gets mobility. He's got decent stats. Um, almost hits rule of six at every level. Mobility can give you some options, but it's requiring you to play spells. And I don't want to have enough spells to make this guy good. Flame Rift Instigator is your Defender Activator. I haven't drafted any Defenders yet, but I may. Um, given that he's a giant, and what the picture looks like, I think he has way too little health for what he does, or what he is. In fact, I still haven't figured out exactly how this creature's lore matches up. But ignoring the aesthetics, uh, he's a very good underdrop. He can activate a large defender and serve as a nice blocker for cleanup purposes. Uh, and he's going to be my pick here, so that if I do see any defenders as we go forward, I can draft them risk-free. Thundergale Invoker, terrible stats at every level, and an ability that requires you to have very specific board setups to make effective use of. Uh, yes, it can sometimes be a surprise game winner, but uh, in terms of surprise game winners, I prefer plenty of other cards over this guy. Shurian Brawler, he's a Shurian Mystic with much better stats, but without the aggressive. Uh, it is a must-answer creature. It's a good underdrop. It's rank 1 and 2 are both solid choices. It's rank 3 is not so great, but if you're using it as an underdrop, you'd have to get to play level 4 to see it's rank 3. I'm taking the Flame Rift, though. Here is one of the bad, bad plants in the draft environment that I forgot about, didn't mention earlier. Um... The only reason I would draft this is to feed it to Groot. And since I don't have Groot yet, I don't see any reason to take this card. It is terrible. I mean, you're using it as a pseudo-removal option, but even then, it's not going to be a fast removal option or effective removal option. It's very hard to put pressure on somebody with it. 
Cotter's Colossus has a very good rank 1 and 2, terrible rank 3. What you're looking for in an underdrop, I wish it's had 7 attack instead of 6. That's fair, Magagumo. Uh, but I'm going to take Colossus. I'm going to take another Firebane Steed here. I'm still not a fan of Deep Branch Prowler. I think Firebane Steed's a much better creature. All right. Now it gives me a very interesting pack. <laughs> so let's start off with cards I'm not going to choose. I'm not taking Gravel Mine. I already have one. It's not a spectacular card. And there are some truly spectacular cards in this pack. I'm not taking Torrent Valkyrie. Uh, Ice Torrent is not a great spell in draft. There is a constructed deck where you can use Ice Torrents and go infinite to murder things, but here it's terrible. Lifeblood Druid requires you to do a grow-wide strategy. When it works, it works very well. However, I've passed on the cards that would make it effective because I had no guarantee that I would see the Lifeblood Dryad and have very, very little grow wide in this deck. I think I've got one Sower, and that's it. So Lifeblood Druid is nice in the right deck, and it can be very nice in draft. Unfortunately, the way I've drafted my deck so far, it's not effective. So this is not going to be my pick. Which leaves me with three cards that could be my pick. Um, Magagumo has jumped ahead and said that I'm probably going to draft the Darkstone of Seer. He's probably right, because I've got the two Dusk Hammers and want to pick up more Dark Forge for them, and its ability is effective if there are other things in play. Um, its stats are terrible, but that's acceptable for a decent ability that also grows my Dusk Hammers. However, I'm passing on Mostodon, which is an amazing creature if you have Dinos. And you can draft a ridiculous dino deck. If I had known that, it, if I looked ahead and realized I could get two or three Mastodons going back to that Pterodon Rex, we would have taken the Pterodon Rex. But that's a gamble because this guy's rare, so you're not guaranteed to see more than one or two of him. The only other dinos I have thus far are the Cragwalkers, which don't benefit a lot from Mastodon because they have such low health to start with. This only brings the level 1 up to 5 health, um, which makes it meh. Which leads me to the true choice here. It's between Darkstone and Seer and Wallbreaker Yeti. If I did not have Yuranti Warlord, this wouldn't be a choice. It would be the Darkstone and Seer. Because I have Yuranti Warlord, though, Wallbreaker Yeti gets a little bit more attractive to me. It's another Yeti, so I can use it to bounce off of other creatures and deal damage when I get the Yuranti Warlord. It also counters any defenders, and if your opponent plays a Hermes, you just laugh and laugh for days. I had that happen in a draft the other day. I played Wallbreaker Yeti on, I forget even what it was, but my opponent had dropped Hermes and given every creature he had defender, and I got to murder my choice of creature and drop a big, nice body creature with 4, 7, 7, 11, 12, 16. He didn't play Hermes again that match. I don't know if he drew it, but he didn't play it. However, I think I've got to go with the Dark Stone of Seer and hope and hope and hope I find some more Dark Forge. Did not find more Dark Forge. Not a fan of Spirit Bloom Dryad. Um, its stats, it's got good level 1 stats, but it's level 2 and level 3 are both bad. And it gives your opponent health, which is counter to the purpose of what you're trying to do. Um, Shatterbolt is tempting just to try and tech out against the, uh, new robot that has massive armor, but when it's dealt any damage, it dies. And tempting, not necessarily what I'm going to pick. Not a fan of Rift Lasher. I have no way to give it mobility. Um, and its attack is low enough that its ability generally can't be that effective, even if you can get it through. Jim Hyde Basher is a dinosaur and removal rolled into one, and is probably going to be my pick here. Yeah, I'm wishing now that I picked up that Pterodon Rex so, so long ago. Uh, this is a no-brainer. 
I can sit here and look at this pack for 15 minutes. Primal Surge is terrible. Um, you're using a play in whatever player level to get something 1-1. Which, unless you're getting something truly amazing out of it, is not worth your play. And you're not going to get anything truly amazing. 2-2 two, two, and 3-3, three, three, while free, are not enough to be a justifiable thing. Deep Branch Prowler, we've talked about. Darkstone Seer, still nice. It's a Dark Forged, but this is the Dark Forged I was looking for. He's a Yeti. He synergizes with your Auntie Warlord. He's Dark Forged. He synergizes with my two Dusk Hammers and my Darkstone Seer. He has mobility, which means he gets through for damage and is harder to block in or block out. This guy is, in my opinion, the best of the rare Dark Forges. All of the rare Dark Forges have this. When another Dark Forge, he gets plus one, plus one, two, two, three, three, and the faction-specific ability. This is by far and away the best of them. Uh, here I'm going to take another Codrus Colossus. Still not a fan of Flame Jet. Eh, actually, I'll take a deep branch prowler now that I stop and think about it. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to play this in player level one, maybe not even in player level two, but it serves as a decent enough late, late game drop, and I don't have, I only have three seven drops right now. This gives me a fourth. And a fifth. Again, Spirit Bloom Dryad, I don't like it all. Come on, Dark Forged. Okay, so I've got a choice here. I already have two Firebane Steeds, and like I said, they're kind of a risky play. Uh, I don't really want another Grapple Vine. Scatter the Seeds is bad, and Feather Fang is mediocre. Question is, do I want Steam Sentinel, an 8-drop, and a very well-scaling creature, so I'm not ashamed to play it in level 1 to take care of a threat, and I have two Flame Rift Instigators to activate it? Or Earth Sign Strength, which is 5-5, five, 9-9, five, nine, nine, 13, 13, which is a very substantial buff to throw on things. Um, if I were playing Necrium, I would probably take our assigned strength here. And I obviously wouldn't have Steam Sentinel as an option because I would be playing Necrium Matera or Tempest Necrium, in which case, you know, Earth Sign, and I wouldn't even have Earth Sign to consider. But, anyways, Earth Sign works better if you have creatures that grow or have regeneration. None of my creatures have regeneration, so it's. Throwing on a creature, none of them are a big enough threat. I think the Steam Sentinel is the better pick here, particularly because I have two Flame Rift Instigators. So the Steam Sentinel is the way I'm going. I already have two Flame Rift, and it's not a great uh, early game card, so I don't want to get stuck with too many of them. It can be a great winner card because of the Steam Sentinel. Uh, Fire Main Steed, again, I've reached the limit that I want to risk with Fire Main Steed at two. Uh, Glow Hive Siren, terrible. Which leaves me with Thranic Ambusher, uh, a 7-7, 11-11, 17 that cannot be used as an initial blocker. Uh, I really am a fan of this card. It puts a lot of pressure on your opponent to answer it. Uh, it's got good stats at every level. However, I like Blizzard Shaman quite a bit as well. Uh, you generally don't have more than one or two creatures on the board at a time. And you can usually get good value out of Blizzard Shaman by moving a creature that is in a bad position with combat randomly. Um, it doesn't always work out, but it has no level gating, so you can use it to try and move your rank 3 to an open lane for murder, uh, or save a good utility creature. It also has pretty good stats at rank 1 and 2. Rank 3 is kind of mediocre, but Blizzard Shaman's my pick here. Ambusher would not be a bad pick either, though. Um, this is a no-brainer. We'll go ahead and go through the uh, two cards I'm not going to pick. Vernon Sphere, 5 health, 5 life, meh. Life gain in draft is pretty much worthless. 5 health is not enough to be an effective combat trick in the grand scheme of things. When you add health to a creature, generally you're trading up one spot. You're going from a negative to, a po to an even or an even to a positive. Uh, when I'm looking at spell-based combat tricks because I'm dedicating a play to it, I want the ability to go from a negative trade to a positive trade. And generally plus health is not going to do it. Plus attack alone isn't going to do it either. You need 
plus attack and plus health. And Nutera has plenty of options for that, but this is not one of them. Leyline Tyrant, uh, when your opponent gains health, he pops into play. There's not enough health gain reliably in draft to make this guy a good pick. And then I, of course, have a Dark Forge that gives my creatures health. Um, it's Dark Forged, and it adds up. I know I just spent 30 seconds discussing how plus health isn't great, but I would much rather take plus health with a body that is a Dark Forged and triggers all the other Dark Forged abilities than to take plus health with no body and doesn't interact with my Dark Forge. So we're taking the Dark Group Shambler. Um, here I'm taking Grapple Vine. It's the only card I deem playable. And Cotter's Colossus. I was hoping for another Dark Forge here. I did not get it. Um, wow, this is a bad pack. I think I'm just going to take the 7 drop, use him as an under drop, or if I get very lucky, uh, mobility spell activations. Nothing else in this pack jumps out at me as being great. Maybe the McGrath Bruiser, but I'd rather take the 7 drop and be able to have an extra under drop here. All right. Let's stop for a second and see how many plants I have. I have one, two, two. Two plants. And I'm not likely to pick up any more because I only have three picks left after this one, so Groot is out. I'm not going to be able to reliably activate his ability, which means I'm using, would have to use him as either a bad play or as a 7-7 seven, seven overload, which I don't want to do. And my wife is calling me. Hello, dear? All right, I'll get her up in just a minute. I'll be you too. Bye-bye. Um, Shardplate Delver is a must-answer card. Um, it is also a dinosaur, so it works with my Thunderstomp. And is probably what I'm going to pick here. It is not the must-answer card that Spring Dryad was in the previous draft cycle, but I am quite a big fan of Shardplate Delver. The other option is Torrent Soldier. It gives you free Spore Torrents, which is free removal, which is always nice. But I think I prefer the threat that is Sharply Delver, particularly since I have a uh, Thunderstomp. Uh, this time I will take the Thranic Ambusher as a uh, pressure card. This I want to play, in, I want to level up in rank one. Uh, because it's a terrible underdrop. Because generally with your underdrops, you want to block and take pl play cleanup or kill off higher level creatures. And because he doesn't get his bonus if you block with him, uh, you want him to be a more aggressive player. So that's what I'm taking here. Cavern Serpent's still bad. I don't like Vigor Wisp. Um, yes, it can heal all your other creatures, but... It has to work with something else, and I've only got Shambler, and that's it to gain health on the creature. So, yeah, Ambusher's the pick. I'm going to take the Stoneback. I like this guy quite a bit. He's annoyingly difficult to kill, and because he has mobility, you can generally pick and choose how he trades out, and he follows the rule of six to a letter. Um, he will definitely be my pick here. And Frost Shadow Strike. Frost Shadow Strike is a very good spell. It is an effective 8, 14, 22 uh, in terms of the damage that can be split evenly across two lanes. Uh, it works great for a cleanup and positive combat trick to move something up the categories. You can put them both in one lane to on the same lane to try and take care of a large threat. I really like Frost Shadow Strike. And that is the drafting part of the draft. I am going to go get my daughter out of bed, and I will be right back. Hi. He's in there. Do you want to come in with me? You like that?
All right. Sorry about that. I'm back now. She is two and a half. And she is off having a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for a snack with her mama. Got her up and made her her afternoon snack. She never really did nap, but she was supposed to. Overall, I feel like this deck worked out decently well. I've got a reasonable amount of Dark Forged um, and some interesting synergies with my Dinos and my Yetis. Uh, it's not as focused as I would like. I would like to have gotten some more Yetis, but it worked out well. Um, obviously, going to open this up with Dusk Hammer. Um, Dusk Hammer is going to grow as I get more Dark Forged. Grapple Vine, I don't know what my opponent's playing, so there's no point in playing it here. There's no creatures for Blood Boil. Crag Walker and Flame Rift are both better served as underdrops. So, Dusk Hammer is the obvious play. Deep Branch Prowler. That's disappointing because I don't have two Dark Forge in my. Holy smokes, that's big. Um, we will obviously play the Umber Skin Yeti. We will battle. And I think we'll just go ahead and use the Steam Sentinel to trade off the Deep Branch Prowler. He's put two things into the Deep Branch. Um, both cards that I he killed with it level better than his one card. So I'm quite happy and fine to make that trade off. And Torque My Mender, yeah, I can just ignore. I quite like my next hand. The uh, I have a Dark Forged and a Euronti Warlord. No, 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 kitty! Don't run! Don't run! You're being so good. <coughs> Cavern Serpent. Okay. Add a very embrace. That's a little disappointing. Uh. Going to open lane Dusk Hammer that grows the Yeti. And I'm going to drop Huronti Warlord over here. Yeah, I should have moved this over and gotten the three damage and then let it die, but it's going to die no matter what now. So he's going to get a little bit of value out of his Cavern Serpent. I will kill it off next turn with the Storm Weaver or. Yeah, probably the Stormweaver. Probably open lane the Ambusher and play the Stormweaver in front of the Cavern Serpent. By the way, I have not welcomed everybody to my stream this uh, 4th of July. Welcome to Exilder and Fragonaut and Grindel666 and Hargrata. Heroes Kage and Indian Incorporated. Welcome Inmander and Leo G's. Lomis, Mega Gumo, Mongo Smash, and Regina Swansis. Oh gosh. He is definitely putting on the aggressive pressure here. Um, I don't think that's going to serve him well. I'm going to accept some more damage here. But I get to kill the Swamp Moss with the Stormweaver next turn. Unless he kills the Stormweaver with some sort of a spell. And wow, that's actually a really nice hand. Using my life total as a uh, resource. I know I'm taking 13 here. 13 is not a great amount to take, but it's going to enable me to have a much better board state than my opponent after the start of rank two. Even if I had drawn all rank ones, I would use the uh, Prowler to take out the Titan, still ping the Swamp Moss, and probably play the Colossus and have a good board position. But I'm obviously going to play the Dusk Hammer and the Stormweaver. 
exactly what goes where, I don't know yet, but play the level two so that that gives me, because they're both going to scale very well going into rank three, and they both have solid rank twos. Uh, my opponent is now being slow. Oh, there we go. A Plunder Imp. He takes out the only creature he can, which is the Fire Main Steed. And a Sower. Now I have some interesting options. Um... I'm going to take that out, use the dust camera on the Titan, and play the Stormweaver in an open lane. Again, I have a Stormweaver that can be used to play cleanup. I accept a little bit of damage in exchange of, for card advantage. Now, what I do on this next turn, I'm not entirely sure. Um, there are three cards in this hand I could play. I wouldn't feel bad about in the Ambusher, the Warlord or the uh, Shambler, but that's going to, again, depend upon what he does. Probably playing... Probably playing the Warlord, because the rank 3 Warlord is just absurd. I don't get a lot of value, because I don't have any Yetis on the board, but uh, it will kill off the Sower, or the Plunder Amp, and the Stormweaver can kill the other one. And then I probably play the Amp Pusher unless I can get enough health from the dust camera to make it survive whatever he plays. Uh, if he plays something that is only doing two, four, six, eight, I can get it up to eight health. Yeah, because it gets plus two, plus two, and then this would give it plus, well, never mind. He's taking this guy out with that plunder rip, no question about that. No question at all. And kills that with a spell. All right. Not quite what I expected, but acceptable. Uh, we kill that plunder imp. We drop the shambler. Go ahead and get leveled. That plunder imp really hurt there. I'll let him keep getting 1-1 one, one tokens if he wants them. I'm not too concerned about it, and I'm not, I know I'm down 40 health to his 100, but I'm not too worried about it. I feel like I have the better board position at this point. Uh, that could change, and then I could be really screwed, but we'll see. Four health left. I'm going to drop the Bright Tusk Sower here, and the Delver here. And now I start to worry, because I don't seem to be pointing ahead like I would have expected. Um, I have a much stronger rank 3 coming, assuming I draw my rank 3s. But that's putting a lot on the random number generator that I would prefer to have out of the question already. Uh, he should clean up the ambusher this turn with something. Hopefully it's an entire play, uh, not some sort of token. Hi there. You want to come sit in my lap? You found tape. Ah, oh, that wasn't good. Crap, where's her banana? Oh, well, it'll turn up. Come here, baby girl. You don't want to sit in my lap? Yeah, I don't know where the banana went. Oh, there it is. I found a banana. Yeah, look at that. I have it. 
the girl. We found the banana. Okay, you can hold the banana. Towards my mender. Uh, we drop dust hammer. Alright, you can sit in my lap. Here's your cup. Uh, now I'm having a bit of a quandary. The turbine mender is too big for me to kill here. I think I'm just going to drop the flame resistigator. None of the spells would enable me to kill it directly, so I'll just wait and kill it with something in rank 3. And have a 7 attack creature on the board that he'll have to answer. Yay! Yay! For everybody that has not uh, seen her before, this is my daughter. She is adorable and loving and sweet and awesome. That's disappointing. Yay! Yay! Uh, we'll drop the Stormweaver over there, click Battle, and drop the Bright Tusk over here. No. Oh, now I have a quandary. Which order do I play the Dark Forged? I probably play the Yeti first and then the Dusk Hammer. I think that's the right order to go. Yeah, it's a banana. Good girl. Oh, let's see here. Yeah, I'm going to use this guy to nuke the pre the Prowler. I could kill the Sapling, but then I'm left with the 9 attack Prowler with Breakthrough on the board. Drop the Yeti here and Dust Camera in front of the Sapling. I'm a bit torn about the order of that play, but I think that was the way I wanted to do it. I know I only got plus two, plus two, instead of plus three, plus three. Uh, but I got the plus two on the mobility creature. Which will be a lot harder to kill. Oh, welcome, Batch the Legless Sheep. Glad you can make a stream. Sorry, I don't have a fixed schedule. Um, I basically stream whenever I'm available. You took her head off! I didn't even know you could take her head off. Can we put her head back on? I hope. <laughs> Let me see. There we go. Her head's back on. Alright, take it easy, Mega Gumo. That is a lot of health on that guy. Um... Bye. Bye. Yeah, I think I'm just going to drop the Shambler, give massive health to the Dust Hammer, and open lane the Ambusher. I could do that. No, I'll open lane the Ambusher. 9-9 nine, nine is not something I'm concerned about. Not when I'm dealing 28 a turn. This is draft. Um... It was also a very slow draft. I spent probably 35 minutes going through the draft process and explaining each pick. I'll be uploading it later to YouTube as a kind of a instructional or tutorial type of draft where I went slower and actually explained my thought processes behind each pick. So it's more instructional. Uh, and then this hand is the best I could have possibly hoped for. Another dust hammer grows my existing dust hammer and the Yeti and should be enough to seal this game. So while it might have looked like I was behind the whole game, 
Um, I leveled far better cards than my opponent. Far better. Some of the, his leveling choices were really suspect. Virix Embrace is bad to level because it's just removal and it doesn't scale well. Swamp Moss Ancient is arguable whether or not you want to level it. I mean, 12-12 still isn't bad in rank 3, but it doesn't compare with most anything that I have for rank 3s. Torg My Mender, yes, it gives a massive boost to health at rank 3, but it's not a threat in and of itself. Uh, you can see in the current board state, I've just completely ignored it. Um, I am drawing pretty well, though, so that is something to consider. I've drawn four rank threes. One, two, three. Yeah, this is my fourth rank three. And plenty of rank twos and plenty of Dark Forge to go with my initial rank three Dark Forge. So I think I'm doing pretty well. If I go back a couple of turns, I, at this point I believe I misplayed the order and the blocker on the Yeti and Dusk Hammer. I should have blocked with the Yeti and left the Dusk Hammer in the open lane and played Dusk Hammer second. But uh, Octagon has conceded. He realizes everything I just explained and that the game was pretty much decided at that point. Yes, he had a lot of health left, but I was whittling through it very quickly with that dust hammer. So, we're off to a 1 0 start. See where we can go from here. And I don't see anybody new to say welcome to. I believe everybody's off. Everybody that is watching Soul Forge on this 4th of July is probably off. Uh, everybody else is off watching uh, Stoutmeister, which I completely understand. Stout is an amazing player. Panda. Good luck, sir. Hmm. This is a tough call. Obviously going to play the Dust Camera. It worked out very well for me last game. And probably use the Yeti in front of the Grapple Vine. Unless he buffs it, uh, that's a positive trade for me, which I quite like. Uh, this next turn falls into the no-brainer category. I played Dust Camera and Shambler in that order. Even if he manages to kill my Dusk Hammer in one, I still make that play. If he doesn't kill the Dusk Hammer in one, uh, Dusk Hammer in one will be five, six, a seven, six, two, four, six, a seven, twelve with breakthrough. I think that's pretty good. Uh, seven, twelve goes to a seven, eight. Oh, that gets blocked by the Shambler. Giving me blocking value out of my Shambler. Really cannot object to that. Uh, yeah, I'll put it on the Dusk Hammer in one. Dusk Hammer in four might have been better there. But that's debatable. I don't think it would. I don't think it is. Because this means that he has to dedicate at least an 8 drop to killing the Dusk Hammer. And if he doesn't have one, he did. Uh, uh, we will put the Sower token to work, killing the Evan Skull. I know the Evan Skull is going to die anyways, but... I'm playing the Fire Mane Steed to get it leveled. Nothing else in this hand really makes me want to level it. That Tremor Sword is going to get big because I'm smacking him in the face, but I, it's not going to have any health, so I should be able to handle it without issue. I've got one Fire Man Steed leveled. Probably will not level a second one. Group Meal. No, why? No, why? 
Do you take it to your mama? You're welcome. Oh, let's see here. I need at least a six drop to take out the Thunder Soar. I think Steam Sentinel fits that build perfectly. And then Storm Weaver. Battle. And this one six is going to do me nothing, so I'll use it to save my health. Yes, the Dark Forge are very good drafting cards. I use the Fireman Steed just to uh, save myself six damage because a one six is going to die to almost everything. Uh, that's a problem. Do I have a solution to it? Oof. That's a big problem. Ah, hi, kitty. Mm, I don't really have a solution to it right now. And I don't see a good solution. Hmm. This is a bit of a tricky play. I think I have to play the Dusk Hammer in front of the Shard Claw in four, and then Shambler and buff it. I could Shambler and buff the Stormweaver. Eight, nine, ten. I don't like that play, though. I think this is the way I have to go. Oh, I left two damage on the board there. That was a mistake. Thank you. What do you need? You need it wet? Wet. Okay, I'll go get it wet so you can clean something up. Are you sticky? Is that the problem? You did have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. All right, he did not find more Dark Forged, which is very, very, very good. Whoa! Hi, kitten. Um, the Uranti Warlord is going to take out the Shard Claw. No question about that. Uh, now the question is, do I Blood Boil Flesh Feet? My Blood Boil the Flesh Fiend, I push through 12, and my 12-8 is still alive with 8 health. Which means he's going to need to probably use rank 2 to kill it. I think that's better than trying to do anything about the Grapple Vine or putting a 7-drop as a threat down. I took care of his big threat. My big threat didn't get damaged anymore. Grapple Vine is still out there, but I'm not too concerned about it. I don't have a lot of reliance on mobility in this deck. Unfortunately, Evan Skull Knight does kill off the Dusk Hammer and live. On the bright side, it only gets, what, one hit on me? Yeah, I ignore this guy and he only gets one hit on me. Um, I play the Stormweaver and use the 7 drop in front of the Grapple Vine that should trade off evenly. I accept this 13 damage for a free kill. Under Imp, uh, rank 1, there's nothing in my hand that hits. Blood bindings, that was disappointing. Uh, you will take out the thunder the plunder imp. Oh. I missed a text from my wife. I wonder when that was. Oops. Uh, we will play a new dust hammer and use the codris to take out the chamber. The 11-11 in rank 3 is worth more to me than this 11-11, because I can block with it. And that is a terrible 3.1 hand. Oh gosh, that's bad. Well, if he has a strong 3.1 hand, I'm probably dead. On the bright side, he doesn't have a strong 3.1 hand. 
I can wipe his board and still have a Cottage Colossus alive. Unfortunately, I don't get to do a lot else. I'll play a 7-2. Just put some pressure on him. Battle. The Dust Hammer dies, so Blood Boil kills this guy. And in turn. I appreciate the uh, witticism, Bacha. Or Baca. Bacha. Or Bache. And my opponent is still outdrawing me. I will drop the 6 9 for the 7 5. I will battle. I say he's outdrawing me, but the way he's playing, I'm being able to answer it with cards lower level than what he's playing, which is good. Very good. Uh, this turn is double Dark Forged. No question about it. Play Dusk Hammer, play Dark Stone. Hopefully, there's something I can kill with. Uh, Thunder Amp will take out the Dark Forge. Darkstone a Seer. That's disappointing. I wanted to play her. Now I'm going to have to use the Shaman buff the Grapple Vine. Buff the Grapple Vine. Yeah. Oh. We'll use the Shaman Kill Plunder Amp. We'll open lane the dark Dusk Hammer. Accept this 12. And hope for something good. This is pretty good. Durante Warlord can take out the Shambler, no question. And then Dusk Hammer grows the other Dusk Hammer. And this is a no-brainer. Fire Main Steed clears Plunder Imp. Warlord clears Shambler. Dust Hammer grows Dust Hammer. Unfortunately, the Dust Hammer is still going to die to Flesh Feet. But it's going to do a lot of damage with Breakthrough in the process. So I'm fine with that. And my 4.1 is all rank 1. Awesome. Just awesome. He gets a 4.1. Devon Skull, and makes it big. Um, I have to battle here. Drop a 7-drop in front of it, and drop this guy next to it. This way, hopefully, I can use that 6 to kill off, that uh, 6, that rank 1 to kill off the Evan Skull 3. I cannot afford to take 27. Stout Hide Stegadon, that's an even trade. I'm fine with that. If he grapple vines here, I'll be sad. Blood Boom. Okay, now I have to dedicate something stronger to that. Unfortunately, I have to use rank 3. I will use the Dusk Hammer, move the stone back. So it attacks, and drop the Fire Mains Deep 3. Kill off his 30 freaking 3 attack creature, and tie us up on health. Now I kind of wish that I had done that in the opposite order, and sacrificed the Fire Mains Deep instead of the Dust Hammer. Um, I stand by my original decision. I had no way of knowing I would draw to Dark Forge in the next day. Uh, that's 20. That's not enough. We will drop Dusk Hammer and Dark Stone. The 4 damage is not enough to take out Grapple Vine before it hits Fire Rain Steep twice, so we'll put it on the Shambler. We'll click Battle. We will wish we had a time machine that could go back in time about 20 seconds, and I put Dusk Hammer in 1 instead of 2. I guess it doesn't matter. The Shambler's going to kill off the stone back. 
it still belongs in one instead of two, but it doesn't actually matter. And he concedes. That's two games I feel like my opponent has conceded a little bit too soon. But I endured the level one four point one turn. Um, that is important to be able to do, and it was done through. And this is a great example of why you want strong underdrops. Because I got the seven seven, the uh, Evan Skull Knight was manageable. Uh, if I had dropped something like a three four or a six six in front of it, it would have had more health and been harder to kill. I did require me to have a follow up the next hand, which I did. But it was at a manageable level instead of something that with 18 health, but I didn't have a way to kill. That's an excellent example of why you want uh, strong underdrops. I play the Yeti and call a turn. In the realm of no brainers, that's disappointing. I was hoping to have some Dark Torch in this hand. Or my uh, your auntie Warlord. Okay, that's a very strong opening, sir. Very yeah, strong. Book. A book. We will drop steam, book. or we will play Blizzard Shaman first in an open lane. We will drop Steam Sentinel. We will battle. And we will call it a turn. I could have grappled right there, and I thought about it. But I don't really like that play. I'd rather say Grapple Vine later uh, when the Ionic War Charger is going to be a stronger play for him. Pretty strong right now, though. Blood Boon. That is not good. Um, I have to start throwing things at that Ionic War Charger now. I don't have a choice. I drop Dust Hammer. I drop Dark Root. The buff buffing the Dust Hammer does nothing; it only gets up to nine health, so that goes on the Blizzard Shaman. Buffing the Shambler itself would only get it to six health, which means it dies to the Spirit Bloom. So, I had to throw something at War Charger there, so it's manageable. Uh, this hand gives me a couple of ways that I can choose to kill it. And that's a good trade for me, because the Blizzard Shaman, never mind, would have lived. Now it has poison, so it will not, but, you know. We will drop the Sower here. We will battle. And we will blood boil that guy away. Bringing the board state back to even. Technically, I'm ahead on board because I've got the Steam Sentinel, but it's got Defender, and I haven't found a way to activate it yet. Ooh, nice. Ah, that's not good. He should self-buff here. And he does. I think now we play Grapple Vibe and Steam Sentinel. Da, 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 da. This game, I'm not as confident about as my last two. I feel like I've been behind on board the whole time. On the bright side, Blood Boil will immediately be available to me. Blood Boot is freaking amazing. I'll Blood Boil that thing. I hate to do it, but I'll accept the 17 damage for board state. And hope to kill that with something small next turn, like the Dark Stone Seer. Do you want to sit in my lap, Slytha? Yeah. 
Up you go. Whee! Oh, man. Okay. He's self-buffed. I was afraid he was going to put it on the Vidim Fang just to make that thing absolutely massive. Okay. Mwah. I love you. We will drop the Darkstone of Seer in front. No, I can't see. She turned off my monitor. Uh, blow up the Venom Fang, because I've got a Dark Forge on the board. It's enough. And accept the eight and play the Stormweaver for uh, free cleanup. Hey, hey, hey. Unless he buffs some health here. Talitha, no. No. We're not watching Elmo right now. Okay, he did buff the health, so that alters my point slightly. But I can still effectively clear his board here. We drop the right tusk sower here. Now if we ping the shard thief, it will die to the sapling. And we want the warlord here to kill off the enforcer. We battle. And that feels pretty good. I might have been better served to kill the shambler and reverse these plays. Um I would have a weaker Bright Tusk, but the Bright Tusk would still be alive. It would be an 8-1 instead of an 8-5. And he would have one less Dark Forged on the board to synergize with. Field Marshal. Okay. I'm fine doing this play. Actually, this play. Get a fireman steed out here. Um, it's really just a chump blocker at this point because we're in rank three and fireman's not going to do anything spectacular in rank three. Fireman won, but it does clog up a lane and can save myself some damage. As much as I want to play the dust hammer here, can I? How many more instigators do I have in the deck? One. Yeah, I don't think I play the dust hammer here. I think I battle, drop the steam sentinel in five, and the instigator in three. Dust Hammer, if I used it as a blocker, it just would have died. I would have had to have open laned it, and I don't want to leave the Venom Fang out there as a available play for my opponent. Um, what? What? Hmm. He has to block the Steam Sentinel. Uh, Which he does, and I have no way of killing it, so we will drop the sower and the dust hammer and take my board advantage and go into the next. Actually, we're not. Turn away from play level four. What are you doing? War Charger. Uh, that makes me really want to play Grapple Vine. I could see. Drop the Stormweaver in an open lane. Battle. And drop Grapple Vine here. That doesn't make any sense, does it? Drop Shambler here. 
That makes more sense. And buff the strong weaver. Enter. You dropped it. I got it back for you. Uh huh. No idea what she's saying. Painful. Have no other dark forge. So that's not you are three damage, so you're not enough. Two, one, two. You will blow up the shambler. You will battle, and I screwed up. It doesn't really matter. I hope. But I should have pinged that for three. It should have seven health, not ten. Ten. Nine. Nine. Ten. Mm. So for all those games earlier where I was drawing well, I'm not drawing spectacularly well this game. Field Marshal, that makes everything trade off. See if I can move the Darkstone of Seer. Nope, the steam set. That was about the worst thing I could have moved. We'll battle. Use that there and activate Steam Sentinel. And then turn. And again, you'll see this nice cleanup that the Flame Rift Instigator serving as an underdrop gives me. Talitha, do not screech. Uh, that should self buff because the only creature that will survive in this scenario. I'm going to ignore the Dark Steel Enforcer because I get to kill it for free next turn and take my board advantage. I don't like taking 12, but I can accept it. Uh, if my Stormweaver lives, he kills the Darksteel Enforcer, which lets me blood boil for 20. Which is quite impressive. And the blood boil will be going on the Light Shield Control. That kills that. That kills that. And that will chunk block that. I am from Arkansas in the United States of America. I specify the United States because I know I have streamers that are not from the United States, or sorry, not streamers, viewers that are not from the United States, and it's awfully presumptuous of me to uh, ignore that fact. Blood Boon pre combat. Well, I clear his board. If I had a grapple vine there, I would have played that over the uh, thunderstomp, but it was not a choice. He's played Werewood Patriarch three times now and has yet to actually get the value of Werewood Patriarch out of it. Uh, we will drop Instigator here. I will accept the 14 and drop the Stormweaver over here. Don't like it, but if I block with it, I'm putting it in danger very quickly. Now don't turn the monitor off. No. No. Yes! Yes! Ah. the health of the Field Marshal so I don't get the free kill. Yeah, it's banana.
this is getting to be so close. I don't need much. But I can't let anything else through at this point. A phone. Yeah, this is a no-brainer. Uh, Yoranti Warlord clears the Light Shield Patrol and the Yeti. Phone. A phone. Yes, it's a phone. Actually, that's not a phone. That's an iPod. Now I get to push a lot of breakthrough damage, and there's the concession. Good game, Zikawaka. Zikawaka. This has been a very interesting uh, tournament for me. All my games have gone pretty late, and they've all been very close. Oh, yes, Mongo. T. Schmidt, sorry, I missed your question on the die now. Uh, Instigator 3 is more valuable to me than the Jim Hyde 2, and they both ended up in roughly the same position. I could have cleared more on the board, I think, if I look back on it, but I'm fine with the way it ended up. Obviously, since I won. Oh, look. Yeah, that one doesn't work. I don't even remember what generation iPod this is. Final Vigil. Let's see if I can go 4-0 in this regular draft, which doesn't really mean much to me. Um, we will play the Dust Hammer. Dust Hammer's worked out very well for me. Uh, this turn, we will probably be playing the Yeti and the Stormweaver. Hello. And have leveled three very oh, strong cards. Yeah. Well, potentially very strong. The Dark Forges do need some synergy to work out to be very strong. Yeah. Yeah. Tricycle Phantasm. That's an even trade, unless he does something. That is not something meaningful. So I'll play the Yeti, I'll play the Stormweaver, a little battle, and enter. Oh good, I have a Yuranti Warlord. And a Darkstone Seer. That's a lot of damage. Um, the Umberskin Yeti deals three, the Yuranti Warlord deals three, the Darkstone Seer deals four, and the Stormweaver deals two. So that's three. Basically, I should be able to wipe his board no matter what he does. What? I love you. A too. Aww. Did you hear that? She said, I love you too. Blood binding? That was rude. <laughs> Melissa Strifeborn is an interesting card. Um, she scales ridiculously well if you're using poison. Malice Hermit plus Strifeborn is a borderline broken combo. Yeah, indeed. I definitely do appreciate going four and zero and seeing what what what's carrying the seeds. <laughs> Unfortunately, with him killing my yeti, I'm not quite sure what I want to do here. I'm obviously going to play my other yeti and blow up the glow hive. Nose. Yes, it's my nose. Question is, do I still play the Darkstone of Seer or do I play something else? I think I would rather level the Steam Sentinel. I have ways to activate him, and he gets to be huge than the Darkstone of Seer. 
The Dark Star Seer can be more powerful, but it's reliance upon me drawing things correctly and in the correct order. The Steam Sentinel, less so. Okay, uh, Glytha, this is getting to be a bit ridiculous. Fungi! Huzzah! And a Zithian host. My opponent has leveled a Zithian host and a scatter of the seeds. Um, it should come as no surprise to anyone that I find both of those to be bad cards. So I'm pretty happy with where I am right now. I will level a rule of six creature with mobility. Oh. She got down. I'm no longer in danger of dying. Huzzah! Huzzah! Kitty! Well, she found a kitty. You know she finds a kitty when she goes, Kitty! Very excited and very, very happy. Really? You identified your own creature? Okay, we'll move that so it attacks. We will we'll drop a deep branch prowler here. We'll battle. And we'll drop this guy over here. Fill the board with defenders that have traded positively. It's not quite the strategy I was going for with this deck, but it'll work. I still have the instigators to activate them. You found a loot crate. What's inside the loot crate? This is one of my later one of my earlier ones. It's the later ones out of mine. Oh, this is the last one I got. I didn't pull anything out of it. I just looked at it. Someday, when you're bigger, you might appreciate this shirt. Maybe not. I don't even know if you can Mama. see this shirt. Mama. But it's a uh, Transformers Tron mashup. Okay. Hi, kitten. Hi, kitten. Thank you. That's impressively heavy. Thank you. I love you. Please don't open that, Talitha. Talitha, no. Don't open that. Uh, open. No, we're not opening that. No, we're not opening that. A Bright Skull Phantasm? Okay. Contagion Surge? Yippee. Move him over. We'll drop an Instigator over here to activate the Steam Sentinel. And we'll drop a Dust Hammer. Battle. Enter. Oh wow, I'm drawing well now. I know. My opponent leveled bad cards and I'm drawing well. Why are you hanging off the side of my chair like a monkey? See here. Oh. This is an interesting choice. I can do six damage or I can do ten damage. If I do the ten, I let the Spore Lord potentially yes. live. I'm going to do the six, drop the Yeti, and drop the Steam Sentinel. 
I could have thunderstomped, but it, if that had had eight health, I would have. But as it stands, I don't think it was the right way to go. Talitha, please stop screeching. There you go. You can play with my phone. Ah, well that was interesting. He played double, or he banished his group. Okay, there we go. I was wondering, because that didn't make any sense to me. He played group to clone it. And Vigor Leech to kill the dust hammer. Um, this is a no-brainer play. I move. I move. I play the Warlord. And I play the Darkstone of Seer. On top of the Steam Sentinel. To blow up the Warlord. And I get plenty of damage. Let's turn my phone down a little bit. Oh, there's the banana. And now I have five lanes to his none. Uh, admittedly, two of them require mobility in order to be effective. Oops. Um... Push through the damage. I will drop this guy over here. Uh, no. And drop that over here. This was a an even trade. Um, Overriding that makes it so that my prowler lives, his guy still dies, so I have an eight two on the or an eight three on the board versus an empty lane over there. I need him to kill the Darkstone of Seer though. So I get some mobility spaces again. Really, scatter the seeds. Uh, let's see here. Owie! Um, I think I just wipe his board here. The flame Lance. And we Thunderstomp. And we battle. Maintain board control and just don't let up. Yes, two of my creatures have Defender and can't get rid of it right now. That's the only thing keeping him alive is the fact that I have two Defenders that he can't get rid of. Maybe I should have let the Dark Snow a Seer die before I did the uh, Thunderstomp. But if he just keeps taking eight a turn from lanes one and four, I'll eventually win. If he decides to change that up, I'm fine with that. He's basically in a position where he needs to not do anything to one and four. He did something to one, that means the Spore Lord play was a bad play for him. Because I'm going to move both these guys over, which means the Spore Lord dies before it gets a trigger. Um, battle. I drop Dust Hammer and the Dark Stone. Blow up the Phantasm, and this game should be over.
Yeah, skirmies, I am inclined to agree. My biggest problem is not having space on my board to move because I have all five lanes filled. I'm in pretty good position. Um, and that was basically a concession play. If he were trying to survive, Glowhive should have gone into lane four to prevent me from moving the stone back. Because he put it there, it's not actually blocking any damage. And so the stone back kills it. Not that he would survive anyways, because between the Umberskin, Umberskin Yeti and the Frost Shatter Strike, I have lethal also. Uh oh. I love it, so yeah, I do. Beep. That. Beep. And that. And 25 and 4 Go. is 29. Okay, let me start ice again. Here you go. And that's a 4-0 draft. Not bad for a uh, slower tutorial type draft. Too bad it wasn't expert, so I didn't get a legendary out of this pack. But I'm playing regular draft for a while until I get all of my set 6 heroics built up. Because I'm still missing several. Uh.